Welcome friends, uh, we had just finished with uh, the research approach and uh, we had started into the research design uh, and we also discussed about the first uh, part of the research design which was the exploratory research design where we uh, uh, talked about what is basically an exploratory research and uh, uh, how it is to be conducted. right? Now, uh, today uh, in this session we will be uh, working on the non-conclusive research right? which is uh, uh, sorry uh, conclusive research, non-conclusive is exploratory, the conclusive research which uh, consists of uh, the you uh, know two basic researches, uh, one is uh, the descriptive research. Okay? descriptive and the causal research. Okay. So, uh, we will go in details, let us see uh, what basically is the descriptive and the causal to start with. So, what is conclusive research? It says uh, it is a research design characterized by the measurement of clearly defined marketing phenomena. There is a clear definition in exploratory you are little hazy, you did not know because you are exploring. In the conclusive research design as the name implies is applied to generate findings that are practically useful in reaching conclusions or decision making. So, as I said descriptive was to able to define something, you are able to define understand something. Let us say in a particular market people are uh, um, uh, more let us say uh, culturally or uh, driven or more let us say traditionally driven, you can say they are very traditional in nature. So, a particular kind of goods let us say religious items uh, and such products are being sold more let us say and in some other market for example, let us say we feel the people are more modern and uh, they are less of tradition, this is less of tradition. So, there would be a uh, sales of different other kinds of products. right? So, this is an hypothesis that uh, we have because we have been describing uh, that this is something uh, uh, traditional versus let us say less traditional we can say, but to test this hypothesis we have to build a hypothesis and test it. right? So, as it uh, says conclusive research design as the name is applied to generate findings that are practically useful, useful in reaching the conclusions. Okay. Now, study let us say this example in India at this moment Reliance Industries which is one of the uh, largest conglomerates right? has started with a uh, uh, offer uh, or a, a new subsidiary called the Reliance Zero, which is the into the telecom. right? So, they are sub, uh, they are providing uh, 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 mobile mobile calls, uh, internet facilities and all these uh, things. right? So, once they have come in, they have uh, they started with lots and lots of offers. right? So, with these offers, and Reliance being a large uh, player with lots uh, with a very deep pocket, uh, it has become a very uh, difficult uh, task uh, competition for the other players in the market like for example, uh, Vodafone, uh, Airtel and uh, uh, all this Telenor and all. right? So, now what would be the impact of Reliance Geo on Indian telecom giants is a study. So, to study this we will not say it is an exploratory. right? because we have some knowledge ki what happens when a new player enters into the market, we have some brief, brief idea. So, understanding on point of that on taking that into context, we will say we are trying to describe the market now in some form through some maybe some develop some hypothesis and test it. Okay. So, exploratory versus conclusive it says it provides insights and understanding of the nature of the marketing phenomena. It helps in testing specific hypothesis and examining relationships. Okay. Information uh, uh, needed may be loosely defined because obviously it has to be uh, information needed is clearly defined here. right? That means clearly in the sense you know what exactly you are talking about that is why you are describing otherwise you would be exploring. right? So, uh, can be used in their own right may feed into. So, as I said exploratory helps in building up of hypothesis it helps in facilitating the development of hypothesis right and this is used to again uh, establish your finding and then to explore further something right the methods are exp uh, expert surveys pilot surveys projective techniques focus group methods right these are structured observations and experiments okay now let us look at the classification of this right so conclusive research two types descriptive and causal. 
causal is basically the experiments. So, all the experiments would fall into uh, causal research. So, in basically in basic engineering or let us say uh, mostly all you see is uh, causal research. For example, any scientific research, uh, any biological, any physics uh, area, in any research in physics or chemistry, they are all uh, causal research, right. Descriptive research on the other hand has been divided into two parts, the cross-sectional design and the longitudinal design. So, if I remember, I explained what is a cross-sectional design. So, cross-sectional design is something like, you know, let us say collecting data, collecting data at one point of time, let us say this is one point of time from several respondents, let us say several respondents in a particular time period. So, let us say this is year 2017, uh, uh, 17, let us say and I have collected data from let us say 1000 respondents. Okay. So, now I would assume or any researcher would assume that all the uh, you know other variables remains the same because the year is remaining the same. So, we are conducting the study in a particular year. So, we would assume that other things will be same. So, they would have no influence on the respondents and that is why whatever data we collect at this moment, they are more or less uh, in a uh, accurate because the respondent is giving a feedback to you on basis of the controlled manner because he knows uh, the conditions are not different now. They are the same conditions they are prevailing for all of them. So, that is why we say this, this research is called a cross-sectional research. right? On the other hand, if I take let us say, if I do something like this 2017, I have collected 50 respondents, let us say 1 to 50, respondent 1 and respondent 50, right. So, same this respondent 1, respondent 50, I would take it to 2018, right. And I would mark the changes in their behavior in their pattern of purchase, uh, let us say similarly, right. So, uh, when I am doing this, when I am doing this, so I am basically, I am basically trying to compare the same people on three time periods, different time periods 2017, 2018 and 2019 and then concluding that there is a change or there is no change in the in the points of uh, you know in, in the in the in the uh, in those areas which are of our research uh, uh, which are our research objectives basically that means uh, what i am trying to say here is that means here suppose we are trying to see ki whether inflation has changed whether purchasing power has changed of people ha has their economic condition changed suppose these are our objectives let's say these are the objectives one objective 2, objective 3. So, if you are measuring these objectives, then we can say ki well it is happening or it is not happening, whether it is growing, it is falling, it is uh, you know how, what is the kind of relationship that is coming up, that is what we are trying to find. Okay. So, uh, uh, cross sectional design and longitudinal design, they have uh, you know in basically in all management research that you see uh, uh, leaving the economic uh, part, mostly and in management financial research, uh, financial part uh, where we do financial management research, there uh, longitudinal research is of uh, is being used and basically, but uh, in economics yes, completely uh, mostly they are into longitudinal research. But in marketing basically, in marketing the research that we see or in operations that we see uh, or uh, other things, we uh, basically they are all into the cross sectional one. Right, because at one point of time we would be taking. Otherwise, if we do not take at one point, the data's behavior might change. Or similarly, if you don't take a longitudinal data, and if you take too many respondents, uh, or you change the respondents even, then what happens? The behavior might not be able to. We might not be able to actually measure the behavior. Okay, so that is why the respondents also have to be same in the longitudinal design and across the time periods. Now coming to the third thing. Cross sectional design is again divided into two, if you can see this single cross sectional design and multiple cross sectional design. Now, very simple single cross sectional design says one group of respondent and once, right, to be taken, the data has to be taken once from one group of respondents, right. 
in a multiple cross sectional design there might be more than one group of respondent right and the data might be collected from them now let's see this uh, okay we'll go we'll go to that so uh, i'll go to that when i go in the later slides i'll explain you in, it's there so let's go to the first uh, the uh, the difference between the exploratory and descriptive as you can see here uh, prior formulation which i have said so uh, take an example here of the difference between the you know um, uh, explaining the um, descriptive research when tata launched tata nano a study to determine the market size of a new car was very important or very vital so tata when first thought ki they need something uh, uh, a car of which could be taking care of the uh, families that was kind they started with the exploration ki what could they provide to the market that can take tackle this problem but then the question was whether there is a market size enough or not to study that they had to go through a descriptive research okay now let us take another example of descriptive nokia which is a fo mobile phone giant had a major portion of market share of mobile but gradually it started losing we all know that because of the battery problems there so many problems which happened with nokia and with its competitor samsung etc nokia company wanted wants to know the causes of its failure let's say Nokia wants to know ki what were the major reasons because of which they failed in the market. So to do this, they would have to go through a descriptive research. What happened? Right? Why they uh, you know they fell down? It is not ki they are completely exploring something new. They might be having some idea and they want to understand ki how are these particular parameters is affecting their uh, uh, fall in sales. Okay. <coughs> Now, what is she, uh, the cat saying? I don't need to look at more data. What I'm feeling with you is already statistically significant. Now, this is to be underlined. This word, when we come across to the core data analysis, this word significance will have a uh, big meaning into it, right? How, what significant ba significance basically means, and whether to accept a hypothesis or reject a hypothesis will depend. upon your significance value right uh, at a particular significance level we say we accept the hypothesis or we reject the hypothesis okay now use of descriptive research it goes uh, for relevant groups to understand the characteristics of relevant groups such as consumers sales people organization or market areas right to estimate the percentage of units in a specified population exhibiting a certain behavior now as i say <coughs> who are the buyers of harley davidson who uh, you know very interesting there was a study there was a research uh, once uh, it so happened that when uh, kellogg's came to india they started launching their uh, you know uh, uh, cereal right into the indian indian market now when they launched the cereal <coughs> they thought kellogg's being a large international player <coughs> sorry they would be highly successful but on the contrary they found that people did not accept their product so that was a phase where they had no clue so they had to explore the market right ki why uh, people are not uh, buying their products and to their dismay they found that in the west where people take corn flakes with a cold milk so the crispiness of the uh, you know uh, corn flakes uh, remains in india pe pre people prefer warm milk so this is a habit in the or the, the culture of people you know the habit of people so in india we prefer a ho, warm milk or hot milk so when you put in uh, the uh, corn flakes into that it loses its crispiness right so that was where uh, kellogg had to educate the people how to uh, take the uh, flakes right so uh, so it is used to understand certain behavior of the people right to determine the perception of product characteristics now this is a very interesting research goes on for example whether umbrella branding is good or bad should a company go for uh, individual brands or should it go for a, uh, like a japanese companies go for an umbrella branding uh, for example mitsubishi masuita right they have one umbrella brand under which different product ranges are uh, coming in but on the contrary uh, some people some researchers argue that Uh, for example procter and gamble hindustan unilever they come up with individual brands right so that one brand if it doesn't do well also it doesn't get affected the effect does not have on the other brands okay so to determine the perceptions of what people feel okay to determine the degree to which the marketing variables are associated now the question is is it like uh, 
is is packaging does packaging have an effect on the consumer behavior does sales promotion have an effect is packaging and sales promotion related uh, is a celebrity endorsement important for a particular brand does it really affect in the consumer products and not in the industrial products or it does affect in the industrial products even so we have several questions in mind okay <coughs> to make specific predictions so out of which then we make the predictions okay now what are the methods so secondary data primary data both are utilized so secondary data is analyzed in a quantitative manner surveys which are primary basically right panels which are uh, like a focus group or something, but panels are little uh, true panels we say true panels are basically more uh, like uh, the same respondent being repeated again and again right. So, panels uh, one particular group of uh, consumers or uh, you know participants observational data and others right. So, uh, as I said the two basic classifications single cross sectional design which I was saying uh, just I wanted to I had told you also there is one sample of respondents and information is obtained once multiple cross sectional design there are two or more samples of respondents and information is obtained only once right. So, the difference lies in the two or more sample of respondents ok. Often information can uh, from different samples is obtained at different times. Now, this is something like in a multiple cross sectional design is just required to maybe the validate the study to validate the study. So, you have one respondent like it is like you know two different sample groups and you take the sample groups and collect the data and then take make an inference and check whether there is a difference between the sample groups or not ok. There is one interesting uh, which uh, comes in the cross sectional design is which is a kind of you can say closer to the multiple cross sectional design is a cohort analysis which is very very important uh, and what is a cohort basically if you see it is a group of respondents who experience the same event within the same time interval. Now, let us assume all the youngsters who have gone through or I will say in one my terms the uh, the Harry Potter uh, time period uh, you know generation the Harry Potter generation. Now, this generation they were uh, they went through similar events kind of similar events right and these uh, people had a one connection that they were all readers of uh, Harry Potter. Now, they were all the consumers of Harry Potter books. But now the point is after this what happens they get disintegrated right. So, some no company or many a times the companies are not able to uh, identify next what to do with these consumers what to give these consumers right. For example, in India uh, GSK comes with Horlicks, Horlicks for example, uh, you know uh, for ladies Horlicks for children's uh, so different age groups. Now, that is a very interesting way of understanding how to retain the consumer although at a different time period ok. <coughs> now, look at, let us look at this if you look at this uh, table you will be seeing there are different age groups 8 to 19, 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49 and 50 right. So, and across the years if you go right if you grow now what is happening if you look at it if you look at it from a uh, you know point of view if you look at the age and the years now one can come to the conclusion if you go vertically down let us say these are the uh, these are the age groups right these are the age groups 8 to 19 and all till uh, uh, 50 plus right 50 plus and these are the time periods ok. So, if you look at the time periods you might feel one might feel make a wrong prediction or uh, uh, you know uh, understanding that there is a fall in the percentage of people as they grow in the age the consumption is uh, decreasing. But if you look at the time period then it will maybe clarify your thought that when this person 8 to 19 he was consuming a 52.9 percent this group and when in the next decade that means these people are the ones who have come to the age group of 20 to 29. So, there is a fresh 8 to 19 age group that has come in. So, these people are now consuming 62.7 and it has not it is not 45.2, but it is 60.7. So, that is there has been an increase rather instead of a decrease there has been an increase in the consumption of soft drinks and if you see 67.7 then it comes to so, it, it goes on right. So, we have to look at it. So, it is necessary to understand ki what is a cohort and how these cohorts influence the uh, marketing uh, 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 characteristics or the sales of a company right of a product of a company ok. 
Now you can see this, you can see this from a first glance it all looks like they are decreasing trends, but actually they are not decreasing trends, right? They are in fact somewhere growing, okay. Now uh, uh, as I explained, I have already explained the longitudinal design. So longitudinal design differs from a cross sectional design in that the sample or samples remain the same over time. This is very, very important to understand, right? One need not forget it, okay. So, uh, these are some of the you know advantages and disadvantages of the cross sectional and the longitudinal design. Uh, you can see it like for example, uh, in the cross sectional design changes might not be able to is may, might not be visible, but in a longitudinal design because the respondent remains the same over 2 to 3 periods of time. So, it, uh, uh, it is uh, you know uh, it can be uh, useful because you can detect the change in the longitudinal design. Data collection obviously is very large we can see here there is a pool of data because if you have a small data uh, pool in uh, uh, descriptive research uh, or a you know in a cross sectional design sorry in a cross sectional design then uh, uh, might be there might be a problem of uh, not getting proper results okay. But in the case of longitudinal you do not need too many data respondents but rather they need to be repetitive right they have to be repeated. Accuracy is a question mark because uh, there can be several factors that can influence a cross sectional design. So, that is why. <coughs> so, these are you can see the bias uh, remains little uh, on a bias term yes the bias is less here, but here because the respondents were uh, less and you could have made a wrong uh, selection process. So, the response bias can be high. So, similarly you have to understand right. Causal research on the other hand is to use to obtain a cause and effect relationships right. A type of conclusive research where the major objective is to obtain evidence uh, uh, basically to understand ki suppose let us say suppose let us say uh, what will happen when virtual uh, reality would be a uh, will really become you know uh, 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 pervasive in the market and everybody would be able to utilize virtual reality or augmented reality for that. So, as a result will the advertisement industry go through a remarkable change will people who are not technologically savvy will they phase out or uh, something will happen who knows because many products have come into the market and because of their sophistication their new technology they have been able to uh, completely uh, delete or made the make the other uh, older ones obsolete in some many cases right so that's why for even if you see many companies today don't even exist where who were one time they were top uh, companies in the world right so uh, let's take this example reliance before introducing geo did a research to see whether decrease in prices now that's very interesting call rates Reliance Geo as I said they have a deep pocket they decrease the prices right it was to a phenomenal uh, you know uh, rate very very uh, um, uh, meager rates they have drastically uh, slashed down and now they want to see can it lead to an increase in sales as well as an increase in market share many companies today play on the volume game. Now the volume game is nothing but to produce more so that and you know sell at a lower price so that you can gain at all fronts for example you can uh, gain on the supply chain front you can gain uh, from a, a large consumer base and uh, thus you can mitigate or you can uh, you know adjust with those uh, losses on the price term uh, from one unit but on the on the holistic term you might be gaining right so uh, this is what is to be seen and that's a causal research in social science now Look at this. Now, when there is a the sun is glaring, it is very hot, there is a requirement of ice cream, right? The person is getting tired. So, tired when he is getting tired and very getting very thirsty, right? So, automatically the demand for co, uh, you know, uh, ice creams would go up. So, ice cream sales of ice cream is uh, dependent on the uh, factor sun the temperature right similarly tiredness or lack of depletion of energy is also connect the causes sun right sun rays so and these two thus are correlated 
So, one researcher when you research this is a very simple example, but you can take look into your own research and understand what can be the cause and what can be your effects. Okay. Sometimes they are not visible, they are not visible to the naked eye, you have to really go deep into the subject. This is a case of Kellogg's, earlier I told you an example on the uh, Kellogg's uh, exploratory part. They want to learn if packaging, packaging can have an effect, if packaging can have an effect on the sales for example, right. So, they what they did was to learn this, they uh, made two designs of packages, one which was the existing one and the other one was a new design, right. So, they wanted to set up an experiment in two separate stores. So, one will sell the cereal in its original box. So, for example, the this let us say this is the original box, right. Uh, this is the original and uh, then you have a sleek let us say new box which is I do not know which it looks something like uh, the new one and the same amount the other things remaining constant there was no change in the uh, the amount of the uh, uh, product uh, into the you know so con the flakes and all. So, nothing would change only the packaging would change right taking care to avoid any outside source of bias they would then measure the difference between sales based on the serial packaging. Now, one you must have heard of is very popular nowadays being used and many companies have taken advantage of it it is called the decoy effect. Now, decoy effect is one kind of an effect decoy effect where companies are utilizing it to their fullest benefit right. Now, what do you do in decoy effect basically you try to let us say give certain ingredients on uh, a particular price let us say 5 dollars let us say and then maybe you slightly you increase it and you make it 8 dollars right and maybe a third one you give uh, let us say uh, at little more right and I do it let us say 16 dollars. Now, when I do this when I uh, make such kind of uh, packagings companies do it you know uh, retailers do it and all. So, people feel ki the you know uh, 16 one is too big a number. So, it is very costly and 5 1 and they start comparing the 5 and the 8 and they feel the 8 1 gives almost double, but it is not double in price. So, this is a kind of effect that uh, uh, takes place and most of the people started using or buying products on this that basis. Apple made a tremendous profit in the market by using this decoy effect to their fullest extent. People have used consumer psychology to a great uh, benefit of the companies have used to a great benefit right. So, uh, <coughs> did the new packaging have any effect on the serial sales what was the effect we are saying. So, use of causal research uh, the basically as I said the causal research has a dependent variable and you have an you have one or more independent variables right could be 1, 2 or i, v, n ok. So, there could be one or more independent variables ok. So, how are these dependent variables even it is not necessary that you have one dependent variable uh, I, I, as I go on to data analysis I will explain you what uh, how do you handle where uh, multiple dependent variables are there it is not necessary that you should have only one dependent variable sometimes the dependent variable also changes its behavior the one time the independent variable may for the next time may become a dependent variable which is used basically in stru structure in things like path analysis and structural equation modeling uh, where I will explain that. And also uh, in a case for example, where uh, multiple uh, there is not one dependent variable there is more than one dependent variable right. So, uh, in such conditions how what to be done right <coughs> to determine the nature of the relationship between the causal variables and the effect to be predicted. So, you have to predict. So, uh, uh, as you see there is something called uh, you know uh, 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 the an error term also comes into this play right. So, this error terms is sometimes in engineering we say it is a noise right or noise or the unexplained variance basically the unexplained variance you could have explained through your uh, independent variables let us say uh, 80 percent of the explanation and the rest 20 percent is the unexplained ok. So, the method is experiments ok. So, the method is experiments. Now, this is a brief description of the differences 
of the exploratory, descriptive and causal before we come to an end to this class. So, uh, so as I said objective uh, discovery of ideas, describe market characteristics in the descriptive, causal is to determine the cause and effect. This is more flexible and versatile right. This is marked by the proper prior formulation of hypothesis which is done from this stage exploratory helps here right. Manipulation of one or more independent variables as I said this manipulation you could maybe bring in a new dependent independent variable and see the effect or you might uh, decrease change the coefficient uh, you can look at. So, and the methods are expert uh, surveys which I have already explained uh, observation and other data primary surveys and experiments right. So, uh, well uh, uh, let me uh, wind up here uh, the class. Uh, so, today what we have done in this session is we have understood uh, what is a descriptive research and what is a causal research, how they are different, uh, what is a cohort analysis, what is a cross sectional design, what is a longitudinal design and what exactly is a uh, causal uh, research where there is a cause and effect and there is a dependent variable, there is potential independent variables and some error terms which are the unexplained which we will be describing or slowly getting into the subject as we move on and we will be doing it later on. Okay? Thank you so much guys, thank you very much.